back in the janitor's closet, I guess. Uh, so anyway, we got a complaint that uh, it's super loud inside their suite. So let me show you. And that is loud. So wow, yeah. So it's blasting air. So we need to go ahead and find it. So here's the basic operation. So you have view, you have alarm, schedule, after hours, and advance. So view, this will allow you to look at all the different zones. You know, you can go down arrow and it'll show you all of those. Uh, this is the back button, takes you back to your previous screen. Uh, home button always takes you to your min previous screen uh, or actually to the home screen. Okay, so this is how you'll access, you know, whatever suite you're trying to get into. When you first access it, you can change your temperature setting here. Um, you can go into override, you can check op occupancy schedule. Um, generally, you're gonna be going into advanced status. So setup here is where you make changes. Zone status is where you can look to see what it's actually doing. And then you can choose which one you want to look at. And then these double arrows takes you to the very bottom, the very last page. And then this one takes you to the very first page. Now this only has two pages, but if it had like four, I could skip from page four all the way to the one. And then this will obviously scroll through one page at a time. Yeah, my light turned off. Okay, and then we hit our home screen. If you go to alarm, if there's any error codes or anything, this is where it's gonna show. Uh, right now we have nothing. You can reset them, and then you can also update, you know, in case you fix something and it's still not showing. Again, sometimes it takes a minute for it to, to reset. Schedule, you can look at your occupancy schedules. Um, so we have de default schedule one for occupied and default schedule two for unoccupied. So if we click on that, we can see uh, schedule, we can change it, we can add members, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, after hours, we can basically override certain sections. Okay, and then advanced, it just gives you some additional settings, but we're not gonna really mess with that. As you can see here, it also gives us zone setup and status, so it's another way of getting to the same place. So what we would do is we go to view. If we want to make any changes, we choose the suite we want. Um, then what we're going to do is advance set status and setup. And we go to setup. And this is where we choose the zone we want. And then we can make the changes here. Now sometimes whenever you're going to change this stuff, it's going to ask you for a code. Uh, you'll have to enter a four-digit password or a four-digit pin, I believe. Uh, not sure if it's four digits, but there will be some kind of pin. Um, not 100% sure if it's pre preset by train or if it's something that's inputted, uh, but my code here, I have to input a code to do anything. Um, so yeah. So anyway, uh, but again, you go into view, you can access your zone you want, and then you just go into advanced, and then you can go into zone setup, and then you choose your zone, and then you can make your changes. So you can even rename it. Uh, you can turn on the heat cool vote, turn it on or off, uh, use local set points so you can turn off their, their dial so they have a little thermostat in there. You can disable it so they can't control it and you can just you know be like, nope, you guys aren't changing nothing. This shows you your unoccupied setting and you can change it as you can see here. I don't want to. And you have your occupied setting for heating and cooling. And then again, see there's five pages. So if you hit the double, it'll take you all the way to the last page. All right, occupancy setup, sensor setup. There is no sensor installed, so that's why it says inactive. This is um, where we do our airflow adjustments, minimum, maximum, and then your low limits for heating and cooling. Your occupancy, okay, we already went over that. And then flow override, that's if you need to uh, open the dampers, close the dampers, and you have multiple options. You can open it all the way, you can close it all the way, you can put it to minimum, or you can set it to the maximum. So that's kind of helpful too. I think maybe the damper's messed up, so we'll go ahead and try to turn it off manually. All right, flow override. We want to close our VAV. I just want to make sure that it's actually working, so uh, the noise should stop now. So let's go check it. Okay, so our damper works. So it looks like we just need to change our maximum setting, lower it a little bit. All right, so we can go ahead and put her back into auto. Yes. So now we need to see if we can change the settings. So 
Okay, so our maximum is 75, which is just way too much. So we want to change that. Let's try let's try 50%, and then we will run it at maximum just to see how loud it is. Uh, yes. All right. So now we need to go back, and we need to go to flow override, and we want to go to VAV to max. So that should put us at our 50%, I believe. Does it show us here? No, we have to go back to see our status. So in status, okay, that's the next page, yeah. So maximum is 50%, zone dampener is at 54%. So, ish. So let's go see how noisy that is. Much quieter. Okay, so our tenant showed up and basically had me crank it all the way down. I thought 50% was fine, but we ended up going down to 37% as our max. Uh, our minimum's 35%, so that's like the bare minimum. So we go into our setup here. Um, you can see we have our maximum set at 37, our minimum is set for 35 for cooling and for 35 for heating. So it won't let us go pat lower than our minimum. So he said we tried to do 36, but I was I just went 37 just to give it a little extra. He's probably gonna have some heating and cooling issues, but you know, he's a therapist, he needs it quiet in there. So hopefully we'll give it a shot. If not, we'll have to come back and, and uh, crank it back up I already told him it's a compromise and we're gonna have to find a sweet spot where you're gonna have to hear it because I was looking at the ductwork and the trunk the main trunk runs right there and then it's just like a short little duct that runs right into it so he we're hearing the friction of the air moving inside the duct so there's nothing I can really do about getting rid of that um, so anyway so we want to go ahead and put this back into normal mode so flow override right here we want to go ahead and put it back to auto and yes so now it's back on auto it's currently set 71 the area is currently occupied bypass so we need to give it a minute it'll eventually show just occupied um, and it's currently in cooling mode so we should be good to go we're gonna give it a minute, make sure that thing resets. All right, so we just gave it a minute for it to, to reset itself, but you can see now it says occupied. Occupied bypass means I was bypassing stuff. Um, so sometimes it just takes a minute or two for it to reset. But anyway, whenever you're done, you just hit the home button, takes you back to the main screen, and you're good to go. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out on using a train Veritrack system with the touchscreen interface. Uh, so thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.